Hello everybody, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and today I'm going over something pretty cool. Um, so, two or three months ago, I made a video talking about SSGI, or Screen Space Global Illumination for Eevee, um, which adds SSGI and light bounce, just a lot, a lot more with like lighting and stuff to Eevee to make it look more realistic with lighting and shadows. Now, I woke up this morning to an email from the creator of this add-on, uh, 0451 is what he goes by, I guess. Um, basically saying that he's released a modified Blender build with this already in it. So, um, it's... If you don't know, Blender is open source, which means anybody can add code to it, anybody can do what they want to it. Um, so this guy took Blender and took Blender's source code and added his add-on into it. So, what you can do now, um, if you go to the page, I'll link it in the description. All you have to do is put your email in. It'll send you a download link. You, once you click it, you'll go to this page. Um, you have the normal add-on uh, right here, SSGI and the different versions. But then you have SSGI Native 1.0 Windows 2.93 Alpha. Um, so, if you download this um, and you open it, it's just like if you were to open Blender uh, from any other download. Uh, like if you download it from the site, you can see that uh, this is the uh, zip file that comes up. And you can see the blender.exe is right here. All you got to do is extract this somewhere or just open it from here. And once you do that, Blender will come up. And this is the Blender version that has this SSGI now in it. So now I'm going to tell you guys how to use it. So basically, um, Obviously, you're going to want your render engine to be set on Eevee because that's what it's going to be using. Um, real quick, if you don't know what SSGI is, or Screen Space Global Illumination, it's basically light reflecting off of other objects onto another object. So if like you would have had like a sphere on a plane, it, in like a colored plane, the color from the plane would reflect onto the sphere, if that makes sense. So, uh, how do we actually do this? If you remember from my uh, video, if you guys watched that... Um, you would hit N and there would be a little tab right here that says SSGI. That's not there anymore. It is actually built in right here under the EV settings. Now, if you'll notice right here, instead of screen space reflections, it says screen space ray tracing. So if you go ahead and click this little arrow right here to drop it down, we can see we have all these options right here. Um, right now they're grayed out because we don't have it turned on. So real quick, I'm going to do a little test and I'm going to just pull up a little test scene right here with a sphere give it two subdivisions and shade it smooth shift a and then add a plane scale it up and then just give the plane a material like a green material just kind of like a bright material and keep the sphere white so uh... normally without that screen space ray tracing on we can see right here um, the sphere is completely white um, it is not reflecting any kind of color from this uh, plane it's not getting any kind of bounces off to it but if we enable screen space ray tracing we can see instantly that um, it is bouncing off and now we can see we have all this green right here um, and yeah uh, so an explanation uh, right here so uh, if you don't know if you're kind of new to blender or you don't really understand uh, like render engines Render engines are how your 3D world is perceived in the 3D application, uh, basically. So, natively, Blender has two render engines, Cycles and Eevee. Uh, Cycles is ray traced, which means your digital camera, your viewport, what you're looking through right here, is shooting out all these invisible rays, and they're bouncing off of things, calculating light and shadows in a realistic way. It's literally shooting these rays out. Eevee is a real-time render engine, which means that you can view things in real time. Um, it's kind of what game engines do, is how game engines work, and it's how get, you can like view your 3D environment in real time. Um, the downside to that is Eevee does not shoot those invisible rays out of everything and does not calculate light like that. It uses a bunch of math and kind of cheats its way um, into a realistic-looking thing. Uh, so that obviously means Eevee naturally is a less realistic looking than Cycles. I'm not saying you can't get it to look realistic. There's tons of things that people have done with Eevee. But just naturally it looks less realistic than Cycles. So with this uh, Screen Space Ray Tracing or SSGI, um, we can see we have a few options right here. So we have Refraction and half res Trace. So uh, half res Trace is automatically on and that basically just ray traces that, uh, at a lower resolution. So if you have kind of a slower computer, then you might want to have this on until you render it. But if we take this off, we can see that uh, instantly our 
little light bounces look a lot less fuzzy. It still looks a little bit fuzzy, but it looks a lot less fuzzy. Uh, we can also change the edge fade, uh, which basically just is how much toward the edge the um, the uh, light bounces. Um, the roughness, uh, what the roughness of the um, object can be. I'm going to set that to 0.5, back to 0.5. Um, that's not really going to show here. Um, it's mainly for if you have a lot of reflecting materials. Um, thickness and clamp. Uh, oh, this is also your specular. Um, specular is how it, absor it absorbs light. Um, thickness and clamp. Don't really mess with these. You don't really need to mess with those. I don't really understand them, to be honest with you. But, yeah. Um, diffuse. Uh, so this is your color data. Um, you can choose your intensity. Uh, intensity all the way down shows no light bounces. Just takes away that SSGI altogether. Um, ray length. Uh, just basically how far uh, your camera is going to shoot those rays. You can see if we turn it all the way down, it's missing light up here. Um, if we turn it all the way up, we can see that it kind of has... It's not that noticeable, but it's not just a blank spot up here anymore. Uh, resolve bias. That's basically if um, your camera makes an error. Um, your camera resolve is always like what your camera sees and what your camera detects. Um, and if it makes an error, it kind of makes up for that. Uh, clamp also don't mess with that really. It doesn't. Uh, it's only really there uh, if you have problems after render. Um, and then occlusion. Um, occlusion is just like your shadows basically. So um, you don't really. That doesn't really do anything right now. Um, it's basically like ambient occlusion. Um, you can kind of see it gets a little darker right there. Um, you can kind of see it gets a little darker right there. But as far as like actual that it doesn't really do anything so um we now have this uh so what can we do now well the way this works is it reflects light so if we change all this we can see that we're getting different colored lights onto this um and if i like change this uh, or like duplicate the sphere and then give it a different material and bring it kind of closer you can see that it is now reflecting that blue light right here off of that sphere, which is kind of cool. Um, also, um, we can change our viewport sampling up quite a lot. Um, that viewport sampling, um, that's just to get rid of the fuzziness uh, in the sphere. So uh, I had some questions last time on the last video of how to make it not look as fuzzy or as grainy. I didn't go over that, and that's a mistake on my part. Uh, basically, that's just samples. Um, usually in Eevee, you don't really need to increase the samples because Eevee is really good with that. But since we're adding all this new lighting and shadow data and all these new calculations that actually have to ray trace and virtually ray trace uh, these spheres, we have to increase the samples. So we can see right here, um, my render is at 64 still. So if I go ahead and put my camera like right here, it's just a test. Hit F12 to render. And wait a few seconds. We can see that it's kind of fuzzy right here. Uh, it's not too fuzzy. But if we change it to something like 250 and then do it and wait for it to render, we can see that it is a lot less fuzzy. Um, so if you zoom in, you can definitely see the like little noise right here, but you can always get rid of that if you really want to with the denoise node in the compositing tab. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much what this add-on is. It's just now um, implemented into Blender, um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I actually like was surprised to wake up to that this morning. Uh, but anyways, guys. Um, Thanks so much for watching. My name is Michael from Polygon Island. Hope you enjoyed this video and hope you learned something. Uh, anyways, thanks guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.